This video is an interview with one of the major educators and innovators of surfing objects on waves of air. One day my brother had taken his family to the Museum of Science in Boston. He couldn't contain his excitement about a person he'd seen mysteriously levitating things and teaching museum visitors how to do it. It wasn't a magic show, it was some kind of new science activity that looked like science fiction. That museum person turned out to be Phil Rossoni, whom I call the evangelizer of walk-along gliding, harnessing the power of, at the time he started, a new thing called the internet. Phil has shown tens of thousands of people how to fly, including me. He created a good paper walk-along glider design, and he's the only other person I know who's keeping track of air surfing developments throughout the world. When I started flying with my students, he and his wife traveled to Pennsylvania, visited my school, and documented what we were doing. When I was invited to teach at the Science Center in St. Louis, I asked this Science Museum veteran to help me there. Uh, tell us about your beginnings with walk-along gliding. Well, my first opportunity with walk-along gliders was really a missed opportunity. Um, I actually bought a walk-along glider, but I had no idea what to do with it, and the directions were a bit sketchy, so we never really learned how to use it. I really only learned about what to do with the walk along ladder when Paul McCready came to the Science Museum and showed them and demonstrated to them how a walk along ladder works. So uh, and then I found out through a briefing, uh, we did a, uh, as a volunteer, I would do a briefing, and uh, then um, my supervisor said, well, go forth and learn how to fly it. So, and that was all the rest is history. I started doing an interpretation, and which means you go onto the museum floor and fly, and wh people come up and ask questions. Can I try it? Um, how can I build one? Do they sell them in the gift shop? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they were fairly expensive when they first came out. How expensive? Thirty dollars each. So. Yeah, they, at the time, at the time, that's what they were going for. So, and I heard that they'd stopped making them. So uh, there was a, a big rush to uh, be able to recreate them, to reverse engineer. And um, so, since I was learning how to make them myself, it was a good opportunity to share with everybody. Uh, so I started a website, a very messy website, continues to be messy, but uh, it's out there for those that are willing to dig through it. I then expanded into paper airplanes, and I like to keep things as simple as possible. So the tumbling, which was introduced to me by Michael Thompson, was really the best way to get people flying as fast as possible. And it seemed to have all of the amazement, all of the entertainment value of the walk-along glider, yet be something that we could make on the spot in less than a minute and uh, be hassle-free. Uh, it's, it's an activity that can be pulled from the trash, essentially, uh, with a, a piece of cardboard to fly. And the big sort of holy grail was to get a paper airplane that flew like a walk-along glider. And one of our big problems was something called a tip stall because the wing was uh, the same angle of attack, presented the same angle of attack to the, to the wind. I changed the angle of attack of the wing tips on a particular paper airplane design and made it respond much better to roll commands from the control of the slope. And that turned out to be uh, a wonderfully popular activity on the internet uh, for people who were coming from the paper airplane building side to see a paper airplane, a sustained controlled paper airplane design uh, that could be fly flown as a walk-along glider. I had seen uh, Tyler McCready on Scientific American Frontiers and I wanted to do it, but I didn't know where to go from there. But then my brother said, I met this guy at the Boston Museum of Science, and he's flying moths all over. And I, I think they're dead, but somehow he levitates them. And <laughs> tell us about, was oh, that a challenge from the etymologist yes, or something? that's right. The museum, was, uh, the museum was installing a butterfly garden at the time. And the butterfly garden generates a lot of uh, dead butterflies. If you can have live butterflies. They don't last forever. So um, he challenged me and he said, well, can you fly a dead butterfly? And 
So we tried it, and lo and behold, it, they worked very well. The only problem was they were flying upside down. So uh, it took me about a year to develop a method to get them flying right side up. Um, so uh, after that year, I started flying them in the museum, and it was a double, uh, sort of a double interpretation because we were introducing, we were advertising the butterfly garden as well as uh, aviation activities. Yeah.